And greetings everyone here. We have me and Amir in another video with following today, uh, Fenrir? Is it Fenrir, right? Right, Amir? Uh, yeah, Fenrir. Yeah. Uh, following actually a Kacha build with uh, Black Fire Cannon, one of the fun big instant burst pen builds. Yeah, I mean, this build's been popping up a bit more ever since uh, Black Fire Cannon got its little buff from one bullet to two bullets, meaning that you can actually hit people. Yeah. <laughs> it's gone from a little tickle to here's a slow and then here's another bullet to the face. Yeah, the, surprisingly, the, the second bullet has made like a big impact. I'm someone that was a huge fan of Pen Kacha with the one bullet, and I'm an even bigger fan now with the two bullets. And it makes a world of difference when you can do two autos and then be able to just press Q and then do two more autos instead of auto Q auto immediately. Yeah, and then the attack speed buff from the Q uh, is actually pretty important. Getting the second auto off like pretty fast and then being able to just walk around or E out, waiting for the Blackfire Cannon to come back up. And then we're also running E shift, meaning that we E shift forward, Blackfire Cannon bullet. Then they're slowed, they can't do anything. We're the engage for our team, the DPS, the peel, the slow. Like we're doing everything we need to. Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah, the slow is crazy for that that kiting potential with the Blackfire Cannon. But on top of that, not talking about the attack speed from the Q, we're also running Accelerator. So this build utilizes the whole factor of being able to shoot off uh, four autos incredibly quickly uh, from doing auto, auto, Q, auto, auto to just do massive bursts with all the um, attack speed increase. Like, I think this build had potential last patch before the buff, um, but the fact that we didn't have the extra bullet, which means that we couldn't abuse the extra bullet from Accelerator, that was probably the biggest change and the biggest reason that this build works now. 100%, yeah. It's got to be, it's the factor that we can now start utilizing Accelerator. Uh... I haven't used Accelerator much with it, but I know that Accelerator is definitely what makes the, the build cook to its like fullest potential. Don't tell me you're a Ghost Light Pen Kacha player then. <laughs> <I'm a ghost laughs> Wait a second. I am a Ghost Light Pen Kacha game player. Uh, I would... <laughs> definitely is not okay. the way. This is definitely the better way to play it. I just... It's funnier. <laughs> I think seeing the Ghost Light trigger from halfway across the screen when you ult is like, that's probably one of the best feelings you can ever have. Oh yeah, you, yeah, it's, it's it's a bunch of dopamine. Uh, that and just like doing like two autos, and then you see the ghost light fly out, and you're yep. like, yeah, this feels good. This feels right. Yeah, something about like ghost light just feels good, even if it doesn't like, even if my ghost light isn't doing any damage or like any meaningful damage. Just seeing it fly out, it's like my brain says yes. Yeah, I, I actually I actually think ghost light is a. Uh... Damage is like incredibly fake a lot of times. I've had it proc when someone's about to die and then it just hit, it just does damage to the corpse. It's like, what is that? Oh, it's like it, the ghost light damage didn't even actually matter. Oh, we're going for an ult here and the sniper shots. Okay. I mean, we're just in the fight from <laughs> 10 years away. Yeah, well, I mean, it didn't look like Kacha was gonna be able to catch that anyways, but yeah, the extra damage is all yeah. that mattered. Got my reward. Um, I don't know. In this game, I feel like we don't have too much, like, to worry about. We have two frontliners. Um, speaking of that, we're getting jumped. Oh, no, we're not getting jumped anymore. Yeah, two frontliners. We just have infinite peel. The second someone goes forward, our frontliners come back for us, and, uh, and we have so much range that the chance of them getting on us is very low. Oh, 100%. Plus, also, technically, because we have two frontliners that are very, like, damage burst like engage oriented uh kacha on this build just benefits so much from that because if they get a clean engage kacha just follows up their damage with more burst and the target is just gonna disappear they're just gonna die instantly yeah then if it is a tank then we have darko just hit him a few times with percent max health damage and and then you don't have to worry but i wonder if we're going to get the Blackfire Cannon online first item. It looks like our items in the inventory look to yep. say yes. So oh, there Absolutely it is. Absolutely it is. Yep. That is the Blackfire Cannon right off the hop. I will say I, uh, I'm i also a huge fan of Elysian Halo. It doesn't look like they're going to be going Elysian Halo for the simple fact that they are running the um, the Didem. So it's probably going to go into uh, Laurel Reef, I believe it is. The pen one. Uh, yeah. I, mean, I don't think that anyone builds pen headpiece when they're running Blackfire Cannon build though, because 
even though we run um even though we're running like two pen items right now i think we switch off of pen completely for most players yeah i believe so i know from my experience it's usually a pen drop off uh i really the the staple for sure is like the mithril armband getting that yeah. extra like just proc getting trying to go 100 percent crit right we'll probably replace our boots with the um the racing boots or crit as well i need to catch my mm -hmm. breath I think players are also going Spectre currently, just because Tiara and Pegasus are not very good items, sadly. Hopefully we see buffs. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah, I, I don't think I've seen anyone run Pegasus in like forever, actually. Yeah, the the stat or the crit stats for that item are just not where you'd want them to be for a headpiece like you can get so much more value out of almost every other headpiece and with the fact that they added so many new headpieces coming into season four like pegasus has been crying yeah i think it wasn't wasn't even competing in season three and now in season four it's not competing we're actually interesting we're giving up the free bz to go into another one uh, I think it's just the battle zone type that we don't want to fight. Speed battle zone is very scary, even if you have the movement speed slow. If you have like an assassin, or in this case, you have a Magnus that just wants to run through your team, like you can't CC him. He's just gonna press W, and then you you just don't have too much agency. At least in a defense zone, your team is able to peel a bit better for you, and you have the shield so that you don't just instantly die the second someone gets on top. Yeah, but I also think. I, I kind of dislike shield zone for the simple fact that like now we're not going to be able to burst a target but I'm, I'm curious to see how this plays out because this is this is going to be where Blackfire Cannon is probably at its weakest. <laughs> yeah, I assume we're going to play a bit more front to back. Oh, I lied. We're e-shifting forward and coming in. We at least still have our Darko peeling for us. Just trying to make sure we're not... Oh, yeah, that is very unfortunate. Maybe maybe speed zone would have been the better one. Uh, it I'm, felt like we just <laughs> didn't have damage. That's what I'm saying. Honestly, I think defense zone is the worst for Kacha there. Just for the simple fact that Kacha had the early Blackfire Cannon and you, you you have two bullets. We barely even tickled Magnus after two shots. It's just it's just not a, a fortunate zone for us. Yeah, I don't even know if we broke his shield. Uh, we definitely did. <laughs> but it, <laughs> it uh, wasn't the greatest. But we'll definitely see its power after this. Like, I, I honestly, if they TP'd a damage zone, that would have been really nice. Like, that would have been, Magnus would have been two shot and died and been like, I'm the tank, why am I dead? Yeah, I think most people are scared. Actually, I don't know how this damage calculation works completely, but I think most Darkos are scared of damage zone just because, at least in my head, it doesn't actually buff his Q damage that much. Um, It just depends on how percent health damage calculations are are done because oh. if if i do percent max health damage but let me i have a damage boost does it still does it increase the the damage that's still also we have a lot of damage coming out onto our darko just unable to do anything yeah, I have no idea how that actual interaction works. And yeah, oh no, it definitely uh Frenier is gonna go Oh, nice E over the wall. But I just kinda yeah. over. Sadly, we're we're trapped in a room and have people on all entrances and then Dina throwing abilities from over the wall. I don't think we're getting out of that one. No. Plus also there just wasn't a really clean fight for for either of them to be able to do. I don't think the Hun Wu was with them right away to like even help with the fight. Yeah, it was um it was a bit awkward for all players in that one, but luckily it's just a day two death and we're able to get a revive off, hopefully make a few buys because we should have a, enough credits to go for, yeah, like a new upgrade. 100%, yeah, we have, we have plenty of credits. The only question is, what is our next upgrade? Because we already have our weapon, we have our mithril armband, do we go boots next or... Are we gonna see a funny new headpiece come out? I feel like I feel like normally the safe bet would be your boots, but we have enough for a force core, so I actually think it's gonna be a, a force core upgrade. Uh, do we go Omerta? I, I don't actually know, cause with crit, you realistically only need sixty. 
It's 67% crit, and then you have a guaranteed chance to crit within your first two auto attacks. So, I'm not sure if we're going to try and aim for two crit items or three crit items. But yeah. we also can't take this fight right under us because of our Hyunwoo is... Oh, just TPing in. Uh, yeah, just TPing in now that there's going to be the enemy team that knows. So, we're going to have to see what they end up doing here. Also, I don't know where we just got this tree from, but... Uh, later, someone, later. I think I think our Darko just gave us a free tree. Oh, or I mean, the slow doesn't look too impactful right now, but I think it's because our team is just being jumped so hard. I, I almost feel like I need to like play more zoomed out with Katja. She's got such far range. <laughs> we can't see half yeah, the fight happen. <laughs> everything that she's doing is on the other side of the screen. Yeah. Oh wait, the slow, the slow is so massive. Yeah, it's insane. It, it's just so much power. Abigail just has no chance to get out. I, I, like, genuinely, this fight looked like... I, I thought they lost. I genuinely thought they lost, and Katja's just about to go minus 500 playing people back. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's just... I think the Katja R took down the Daniel, and then the slow from Blackfire Cannon made it sure that Abigail can't get out. Like, just look at the damage that happened to Fiora there. Like, my god, it's disgusting. It was sadly, uh... Gotcha's mortal enemy being able to dodge auto attacks. Yeah. When you have two bullets and someone can stop one of them. Yeah, it becomes a, a bit of an issue for her. How much do you need? And like, now we have. Now we're like not too far off of blood. Do we just save for blood or are we buying a four score? And if Surely we buy a four score. Um, oh, thank God. <laughs> yeah. It looks like we are going to go home worth it then. Yeah, if we if we if we bought blood if we saved and bought blood and gave up our blackfire cannon, I was going to be extremely upset. <laughs> I mean, you know, some players just value that blood item. Over the blackfire cannon, though, our baby, like. I mean, you can get the same passive on it. It's no. it's just, you know, plus two bullets and a, a bit of extra damage. I think the blood upgrade actually is very worth it, though. I know some players used to uh, get the blood weapon and not upgrade to red, but just getting the slow, like you only lose out on one bullet. Kacha wasn't utilizing every bullet previously as well. Yeah. Oh, also, this fight was pretty much over before we joined. We, we were able to throw the R and then come over, make sure Nikki falls on the floor instantly. Yeah, but all at the same time, I almost feel like uh, it's kind of intentional. Like, kind of playing far back and, like, out of the fight for a bit. And then just running yeah, late. We're, we're never in danger from, uh, from a lot of these fights. Like, a lot of the fights start with our team engaging, our opponents not knowing that we're really there. We show up, pump a bunch of damage, and then the enemy team is wondering what happened. <laughs> exactly. And also, lo and behold, here's the finished build. Uh, what I find interesting is the 30% CDR. Um, I didn't feel like the CDR mattered too much with the two bullets, so I'm kind of curious to see how this plays out. I think the thought process is that Smart we have Q? two bullets, then we need, we need to be casting Q as often as possible. Because if we don't have a, if we don't have our queue up, then we actually have to reload at one point. Okay, I don't. Okay, wait, what, where's our Katja right now going? I, um, I, I, <laughs> I was wondering the same thing. Uh, I, I don't know. Our our two teammates are in the corner. They're they're fighting. Uh, our dark was in red, running right now, <laughs> and we're kind of just just chilling. Don't worry, we got console. This is this is kind of the extreme variant of I'm not in the fight until you guys start fighting kind of moment. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're throwing the R now, which does a lot of damage, actually. But honestly, maybe Dema is Kacha's biggest nightmare. I didn't even realize it, but Dema has a dodge. She can dodge auto attacks, and she also has a wind wall, which means that we can block projectiles yes demo is actually like pen worst nightmare last patch i played it 
and I was facing a demo that was in blue form, and every time I went up to auto, they'd win wall. And then I'd walk up to auto, they would win wall. And I just, I couldn't hit them because they just kept win walling every shot I did. <laughs> yeah, and then anytime you look for the R as well, like, oh, well, here's my wind wall. That just feels, that feels so unfortunate for the uh -huh. Kacha player. Oh, also a lot of damage yeah. coming up from the R. Yeah. This is a lot of damage. You know, I'm coming over here. I'm sorry, but the Kacha cam is not as interesting right now. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean... When Koch is alting from a, from a screen away, it's uh, it's pretty hard to keep the the Kacha only POV pretty interesting. Yeah, I don't I don't know. Maybe we'll maybe I'll do more dynamic camera operating here for everyone. But like, like literally, Kacha played so safe there. They were two screens away, did half their HP, and then walked up and said, "Did the fight go well, guys? Did we win?" Like. <laughs> Maybe this character is a lot stronger than I thought. Oh my god. I always see Katja and I think like oh she's she's uh getting a lot of benefits from the ADC issue that is happening a lot right now where a lot of ADCs just feel very strong. Um but no, maybe Katja specifically is just an issue because of her infinite range. Well because yeah. you never have to join the fight to really be a threat to the fight. Yeah, especially because, like, Katja has really good information in, built into her kit, so uh, automatically makes her be safer for her and her team. And then on top of that, she just has also really good range, because she is the longest range next to Rio with her longbow form. Yeah. And I think uh, alongside her being able to just get free credits while her team is killing people, so she might be one of those valuable ADCs. Oh, did R, R even go off or? I oh I no! Think so. I, I don't think we were Ring. I, I don't know what I saw. Holy. I saw some animation, but also Rachel just fell on the floor. Oh, that's what I'm saying, right? Darko pulls them in and just immediately, just instant nuke because it, like this is what Katya can do in this form. It's just so much. Okay, that didn't look like a lot of damage, but like those are doing so much. It's crazy. I mean, this is 300 damage and auto attack to a Fiora who. Most people might not know, but I'm pretty sure it's Fiora who has the second most health scaling in the game. Um, and she her defense scaling isn't too weak either. Like Fiora is naturally tanky. So 300 like 350 damage and auto attack. Uh, that's pretty massive. Yeah, and we're 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 almost at 400 attack damage on Katja right now without a craft done. Yeah, if we I mean if we had blood or we're not even level 20 yet. We might just be able to hit 400 this game. Yeah, and we've got, like you mentioned, we got the 67% crit. So, guarantee there should be an a crit every other auto. Yeah, which for most people is going to be dealing like 600-ish damage. That that's a scary auto attack. Um, we're also missing um missing our tears of Celine. Yeah, it's, yeah, exactly. We get a tier Selene as well. It's just it's gonna be so much. And if we if we E shift forward, this is a very big thing with E shift. Once it's E shift three, the downtime is half the cooldown, and I'm pretty sure it is 15 seconds, meaning that our opponents realistically only have 15 seconds to punish our E shift, and that's not too much time when it's Katja. She's already playing 15 seconds away from the fight. Oh my god, oh look, my look at that damage. pose, like what? Like other characters have to start aiming their poke, Katja, whip out a Q, if it misses, go for the auto attack. Exactly, and then just also, the slow immediately makes the opponent panic, you know what I mean? They just don't know what to do, because they have to try and get away from it, so they don't get caught. And, like, it was, this just feels so unfair for the Rozzy team. <laughs> They're trying so hard to find an angle, Katja's auto attacking them from away, they try and disengage, Katja throws the R and then the D skill, and that's like Katja just plus 3,000 damage yeah. for fun. Yeah, come on, come on, Roz, you're the ADC. Help fight the neutral. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> All right, now the chickens, though, on the other hand, this here, oh. Katja loses every time. <laughs> yeah, I think these chickens have taken longer to kill than, than most players have. Oh my gosh. I wonder if they flip for the 50 50 on Battle Zone. Or if they try and punish the uh, the Rozzy team. I think it's a flip. They're definitely playing patient. 
Yeah, I like seeing the patient play whenever we want to win games, but, uh, you know, as someone who wants to see, like, complete chaos almost all the time, I want to see a contest. Okay, the sniper skill. I can see them. They know Magnus is walking out. Oh, the R does sadly go wide. And it looks like both teams will be backing up a bit, just trying to make sure that they aren't losing their battle zone for free. Yeah, the other thing too, though, is that technically the Kacha team wins in offense and defense. Like, in only yeah. in, uh, in the Razi team only wins on defense, I think, right? Because they they want to have the push in, but I mean, Kacha can just siege for so free. Um, I actually think the Razi team is better on offense. You think because so? Because... If the Razi team can just go forward and and just keep going forward, then Kacha can only really try and stop one person, and it's up to the rest of her team to uh, to try and help out. Right. Because if Magnus can just bike forward, Dema goes for an ult forward, and Razi Razi just keeps keeps running. <laughs> there isn't really much else she can do. I think if this team is ever put in a in a defense state where the where Kacha isn't forced to walk into the zone, so as long as Kacha has some timer, I feel like this fight is unwinnable for Rozzy team. Oh, oh my God! And the E shift or forward just e again. Forward. And then yeah, the second that Demma even starts to get close, we E backwards. She's slowed. We auto her. She's slowed again. And we're just like chunking her HP wise. Like, oh my gosh, the damage is just insane. Yeah, this damage is just so illegal. <laughs> we autoed Rozzy for like 300 damage there. Rozzy only has like two 2,000 HP at level 20. Yeah, and yeah, I mean, honestly, very interesting gameplay all, all together though. I think Blackfire Cannon, probably one of the higher damage utility based items in the game right now yeah i would have to agree because you you think of it as a damage item but that slow really provides like a crazy utility and kiting yeah i've kited away so much with just using that ability it's it's incredible or and then the fact happen. that you're throwing it on one of the longest ranged adcs like your utility like the range at which you're able to to abuse it has skyrocketed so much especially with e-shift we were talking about that e-shift being um being picked up because you know normally like you, when, when this when this build first came to be fruition you'd see like the strider you'd see the blink but like e-shift adding that extra range to be even more safe or catching people that extra inch closer is kind of crazy you know strider three somewhat useless when you're already hitting them for a 99 percent slow okay but like the damage <laughs> <laughs> the damage is really funny I think that's my favorite part of Strider. Oh yeah, 100%. You just Strider uh, a Q auto, and then suddenly they lose like half their HP and they're panicking, and you're like, oh, I'm out of it. I don't have any more damage. That was that was it. I just, yeah. I just thought it was funny. But you know? They don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, overall, pretty good game. I think Kacha hopefully going to not be this oppressive going into future patches. Oh, no, 100%. I mean, I think the other factor, too, to talk about uh, with this Kacha specifically, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, I believe the Kacha in this game here had, what was it, like 34,000 damage or something like that? Uh, Something around there, yeah. Yeah, so the big... Oh, no, it was 37,000 damage. I think, oh, the most most, yeah, I think the most important thing to reference about this is that this build lets you utilize your ultimate and de-skill because Kacha, like 80 percent of the time in this game contributed to the fight with a three-man alt and a sniper skill yeah we threw like maybe 10 auto attacks in a fight yeah so pretty but crazy those, yeah those 10 auto attacks were usually enough to just put someone on the floor <laughs> also i think the laurel wreath actually is such a massive upgrade i'm looking at the stats for it and it's 37 attack power yeah plus which, 10. it's crazy that is that's actually a really high amount for a tree that that doesn't really feel fair 
Yeah, it's it's kind of cracked. The only item that I can say that I would argue to be equivalently as good is Elysian Halo, and Elysian Halo is a force core. Like, yeah. let that sink in. The a force core item is the one that I'm like, you know what? It's kind of comparable. Like, you could run both. Like, both are fine, but it's like one's a tree, one's a force core. It just doesn't appeal fair. Maybe maybe ADCs have it a bit too good right now. <laughs> just maybe. All right. Uh, well, I think that's the wrap up of this video then. And we'll see you all in the next one.